Ezt a beszélgetést ugye szimbolikus okok miatt a Budapest Pride hivatalos megnyitója előtt szerveztük meg. Pont azért, mert a Pride-nak a résztvevői bizonyos ilyen ideológiai megfontolásból úgy gondolták, hogy nekünk, a mi szervezetünknek, illetve azoknak a szervezeteknek, akik velünk együtt dolgoznak, nincsen helye a Pride hivatalos programjában. We have stated that we plan to discuss problems faced by LGBT sex workers forms of discrimination and violence they face, and what their needs and demands are both in the international and the local context. First, to our big surprise, we got an approval. Ten days later, we received an email from the organizers that they, may, that they changed their mind because of the following reason. The organizing team of Budapest Pride has consensus on that sex work cannot be chosen voluntarily and is built on the structure of oppression of the current patriarchal society. In this sense, they consider it to be dangerous, I said dangerous, to have a discussion based on other definition of the term, which is ideologically is out of line with the spirit of Budapest Pride. After this, we try to explain to them that uh, we don't think that we have to agree on certain things. And we are just organizations working on human rights, trans rights, or sex workers' rights. And we just want to talk about the situation of LGBT sex workers and trying to find real solutions to real problems they face. LGBT sex workers are facing really high levels of human rights violation and discrimination, often because the two stigma of being a sex worker and being LGBT overlap. Between 2008 and 2015, in seven years, 1,700 trans people were murdered globally. Basically, the large majority of trans people who are murdered are sex workers. The violence and discrimination against LGBT sex workers have many causes, many roots, like uh, homophobia or transphobia. Also the laws that often criminalize sex workers and LGBT people. Uh, this is why more and more human rights organizations and LGBT organizations are listening to sex workers. Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, the UN, the World Health Organization, Transgender Europe and countless other human rights and LGBT organizations are supporting the decriminalization of sex work. So on a personal level, I don't disagree with Budapest Pride that sex work is built on patriarchy or capitalism. But that's the reason why we should be involved with other social movements like feminist movement, LGBT movement, labor, etc. to work together to give more rights to sex workers and not exclude us from the table. 6% of all sex workers in, in Europe are transgender persons, while 7% are cisgender male. Trans people engage in sex work for a variety of reasons. Most commonly because they live in a transphobic environment and face uh, structural barriers to education and employment. Transgender Europe has uh, a project called Transrespect versus Transphobia. According to these surveys, 99% of respondents in Colombia, 76% in Turkey, 68% in Venezuela, and 47% in the Philippines stated that they earn their living by sex work. So in this context, how can we not talk about sex work when most of our our comrades in our community are engaging in sex work and, and putting a stigma on them, like blaming them being victims and, and, deni and the denial of their agency is something that is unacceptable to us. Od skoro je uveden novi zakon za koji se kršnjavaju i klijenti. Tu dolazi do hapšenja seksualnih radnica gde se osobe koje se bavaju seks radom jako diskriminišu i ponižavaju. A kad se ov, e, osoba koja je privedena, pričamo o transrodnim osobama, ovaj, e, u zatvor odvede, u padesku skelu, e, tamo su uslovi užasni. Day by day, police is chasing the girls, chasing everybody through the city like wild animals, and uh, this must stop. Како LGBT сексуални работници бивме опатени од страна на сервис провайдери, но друга страна бивме цело сме исклучени од од LGBT движењето. Одбивајќи го нашето вклучување како LGBT сексуални работници во креирањето на одредени политики и активности поврзани со сексуалната работа и LGBT движењето, по нашето регистрирање како официална Organizacija Star Star aktivno počne da vključuva pokrajmaški 
женски, но и ЛГБТ сексуални работници. А со тоа се покажа дека и ЛГБТ сексуалните работници можат и заедно, како и останатите сексуални работници, во сите активности настани треба да бидат приклучени. I think every girl must answer for themselves because there can be 1,000 reasons to earn money with it. So not everybody can do it, but if you if you like to choose it, then you should be allowed to do it. I think that when people talk about choice or survival sex work, all it's doing is separating us, when really all of us have our own reasons, our own structural reasons for going into it, transphobia, homophobia, phobia against other groups and people who use drugs might have to fund their, their drugs through sex work. So there, there's lots of intersex and section, sectioning issues around it. So people who believe that they're helping sex workers by thinking the ones that choose it, that's fine, but the poor mums that don't choose it, or the poor trans sex workers who don't have any other options, or the poor 16-year-old sex worker who works on the street and uses drugs, no matter what our choices were or weren't, we, st get, we still face human rights violations through criminalisation, including criminalisation of our clients, of our managers, of our partners, of anybody we live with who lives on our earnings. It's these sorts of things that oppress us rather than the work itself. So no matter what the choice we're working, and I extend this to people who are forced to work, forced to work because even in a criminalized context those people just were way underground in decriminalized context or depenalized context it's much easier for sex workers to be able to work together to challenge things like exploitation in our industry abuse stigma against us that allows clients to come and rape us without any payment police officers to rape us to expect free sexual services police to arrest us and these are the things that we have to actively all together challenge rather than asking, and I don't mean it badly towards your question because I'm asked it all the time and actually I love that question because I like to challenge it. We don't all choose this work, it's not free choice. None of us in this society have a free choice over our employment. And sometimes in the most limited choices, that's when you're most at risk of criminalisation and human rights violations. So it's those people who mostly need protection of the law. We, we did a research on Norway and uh, because, because we wanted to have a research on a country which, uh, which implemented the so-called Nordic model. And we found that, which is, I'm, I'm sure not a surprise for you, that the Nordic model doesn't work. The evidence clearly shows that uh, criminal, criminalizing of buying sex is actually makes more harm. Uh, so we are opposing the Nordic model uh, based on the fact that it's, uh, it, it leads to serious human rights abuses of the sex workers. Amnesty calls upon the governments to decriminalize uh, sex work, but it's much more than just uh, decriminalization. Basically, we have three bigger uh, recommendations or, or requests from, from the government. One is the, to protect uh, the sex workers from the human rights abuses. Second one is the let the sex workers participate in those uh, debates and those processes which are, which are about their safety and dignity and human rights. And the third one, we think that the government should do more on uh, providing access for sex workers to healthcare, education, and uh, employment options.